pleasure. It's tree planting day in the village of Fintry. Primary school children and their parents are working together to plant a community orchard. Fintry is a village with about 311 households in southwest rural Stirlingshire. It's a fantastic village, just naturally quite beautiful, but also has a really strong community spirit and interaction. You're doing this, sure. what you do is you try and get it like that, okay? You're going to miss tell me. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing trees all along here, all along the Kippen Road, and then we've got a back patch there, so we'll have an orchard of 40 oh. trees total for the community. Oh, and, you know, obviously, hopefully, this will be the start of something growing. Fintry has rolled out one green project after another in recent years. The driving force behind these projects is Fintry Development Trust. The aims and objectives are, quite simply, to make Fintry a zero waste, zero carbon and sustainable community. Sustainable, that sounds very green and alternative. But in fact, what's happening in Fintry is a necessary response to ongoing problems the community is facing. In the future, I can realistically see it being quite unaffordable for your average uh, person to live in a rural community. Uh, with transport costs going up, with fuel costs for, for heating uh, going up as well, uh, as well as uh, food costs and so on potential going up. The village itself is actually off mains gas and so the only traditional heating choices are either electricity through storage heaters or traditional oil fire boilers or uh, liquid petroleum LPG. These forms of, of heating are particularly expensive and particularly inefficient and fuel poverty can be quite an issue, especially with the escalating prices of, of heating oil and LPG. A survey in 2008 found almost half of the households in Fintry suffered from fuel poverty. Moreover, like many other rural communities, Fintry has lost a number of amenities, such as the village shop and post office, and there is no regular bus service connecting the village to the outside world. The village is having to sort of regroup and rethink as to how we can improve our situation, but generally there's a, a great enthusiasm to make a difference. There are so many aspects of this small community where um, groups of people have gotten engaged and made a difference, slowly but surely, as a community. Um, yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's fixing things that uh, we've lost in the past. And so some determined Fintry folk set out to fight the adverse impact of rising energy costs, service cuts and rural depopulation. It might have been seen as tilting against windmills, but in fact, it was to become a fight for a windmill. A bunch of people came along to one of the Fintry Community Council meetings and turned out that they were wind farm developers uh, and they were wanting to put a, a wind farm here at Ellsburn. From that day, we've kind of just been dealing with uh, the developer and there was through Oh, was it about five years of meetings with developers and yeah. planners and politicians and also the local community. And eventually what happened was that the development company Falk said that they would provide the capital for our turbine along with the other 14 on the site, um, build the whole thing as, as one site and we would over the years pay, pay back our share of the capital cost out of the income that the turbine generates. We would also, rather than getting the output from, from one turbine, we would get the output from uh, kind of more or less a 15th of, of the total output of the site. Fintry doesn't own one individual turbine, but one 15th of the wind farm as a whole. However, this solution also has advantages. In some ways, we ended up with the best of both worlds because we can point to one of the turbines on the hill and say, that one is there because of the efforts that we put in. There is a 15th turbine on the hill, but at the same time, we're not completely dependent on that turbine for the income that, that's generated. It's probably somewhere between kind of 30 to 50,000 pounds 
that's coming into the village per year at the moment. And when we've paid off the loan, the, the kind of mortgage, if you like, it should go up significantly to, to somewhere near our £400,000 a year. Fintry became the first community in the UK to enter a joint venture agreement with a renewable energy developer. Shortly after, Fintry Development Trust was set up to decide how the income generated by the turbine should be spent. Since then, the Trust has rolled out a number of projects to address problems the community is facing. The first project was uh, what we always refer to as the insulation project, and uh, that was, you know, there's kind of two main elements to it. The first was surveying energy use uh, within the village, within the households. And at the same time as we were doing that survey, the householders were offered um, free um, roofing and cavity wall insulation. Uh, and about 50% of the houses in the village um, were able to benefit from, from that insulation altogether. The insulation project reduced energy bills in the village by more than £90,000 a year. In addition, the Trust is helping people to realise there's more they can do to save on their fuel bills while also reducing carbon emissions. Alex wants to replace her old boiler with a renewable heating system. Stephen helps her to choose one that suits her needs and property. It's not just an issue of being environmentally friendly at, at all, it's an economic one too. What you have to do is weigh up quite a lot of variables. The grants and loans available, capital cost, the savings on your average yearly bill, the future trends in terms of things like oil price rises, electricity price rises, new technology coming on board. If Stephen hadn't been here at this point, I don't think I would be contemplating this process because I looked at all of this a couple of years ago before Stephen's arrival in the village and I couldn't get either the Energy Savings Trust or installers to give me an indication of how an alternative heat system such as air source or ground source would, would operate financially and also effectively in a property of this size and this age. So what we've got now is properties in the village and people in the village who have gone through this process in much older properties and much bigger properties and much draftier properties and it's working for them. Kate and David Howell recently exchanged their oil-fired boiler with an air source heat pump. It was, it was um, sort of coincidental in terms of timing. Um, I just received a letter from the oil supplier informing me that due to the increase in oil prices uh, that our direct debit per month was going to soar from I think it was about 110, 120 pounds a month we were already paying to 200 pounds a month. And uh, that was in the same week we heard that our air source was due to be installed. So I had the terrific pleasure of being able to phone and say, thank you very much, but we will not be increasing our direct debit to £200 a month. In fact, we'll just pay off anything we owe and that will be the last of mm. uh, our oil requirements. So that was a nice moment. It, it is quite pioneering for such a small village to be doing this in such numbers. Mm. And that's something we've got to be proud of. Other people in the village are, instead of going down the air source route, maybe have ground source. There's a number of ground source installations that have taken place in the last six months. Chap next door, I believe, is going to put solar panels on his new, new build. There's three biomass installations taking place. We've had neighbours come and ask and come and look and see what we're doing. So hopefully it'll just have a knock-on effect. Obviously with a lot of people who are on oil and LPG, there are a lot of people that will be looking to replace their heating systems. If that happens, of course, there's potentially jobs for local tradesmen, local, local people and able to, to do the fittings for them and do the heating systems, as well as with things like uh, wood chip boilers. In order for there to be supply of wood chip, there has to be sustainably managed forestry. Uh, with sustainably managed forestry, uh, that has to employ people to do so. Uh, and also maintain chipping plants and um, uh, use that sort of as an energy supply company. So the, a lot of the, the heating system things can, can actually be a, a way to introduce uh, employment to the village itself. We can't kid ourselves, not everybody that lives in the village can have a job working within the village. It's not possible anymore, uh, but uh, you can improve on it and you can enhance the, the, the sustainability of the village.
Renewable energy represents an exciting opportunity for communities. They can benefit by generating power locally and save money by installing renewable heating systems. Scotland's a really exciting place to be just now for community energy. Uh, we're, we're certainly not alone in developing it, and I know that in Denmark, for instance, uh, a very significant proportion of the energy there comes from community cooperatives and organisations who have developed their own wind farms and biomass cooperatives and things like that. But there is an awful lot going on in Scotland just now. Uh, we've, uh, we've helped communities out with over a thousand projects so far, I think, both small and large. I've been working with Fintry over the past year in particular uh, on a variety of different projects. Uh, I suppose one of those has been uh, at the sports club where they're looking at installing a, a biomass boiler. We're unloading a boiler for the sports club uh, to replace the existing oil boiler. This one's going to be running on wood chip. It's heavy. So we've had to get a local farmer come down to give us a hand to uh, lift it off the, the truck and we're going to store it until we can put it in place. Wood chip uh, can be sourced locally, uh, brought in locally from local woodland, so the carbon savings are, are, are very, very good. The financial savings uh, from it are considerable as well. It should be roughly about £6,000 a year. By better insulating people's houses and helping to switch to renewable heating systems, Fintry has lowered its carbon emissions considerably. At the same time, fuel poverty was reduced by a quarter and local jobs created. Could this success be replicated elsewhere? I think the starting point for any community is to look at what the issues facing the community are, but also what the opportunities exist to try and tackle these issues. And that is particularly evident within the, the Finchie problem, where an opportunity arose out of the blue, and it was how the community responded to that and was able to um, link the opportunities and the income that was potentially generated to addressing some of the key community issues. This woodland uh, is an idea that we've been developing for many years, but we, we couldn't get it off the ground without the financial assistance and, and the support of Fintry Development Trust. The big thing for us is that children will be out in their own local environment, exploring that, using it for learning and for fun and for play. Um, there's this path down here which leads down to a little river which we're hoping to get a little walkway on top right. because it keeps flooding. The reason we are here is for children to, to think about how they can impact on the future. And therefore, as they grow up, they will carry forward the sustainability themselves. This is a pretty magical place, but it can only stay this way so long unless we start looking at ways that we can make sure houses are heated with renewables, make sure people actually can get employment and afford to live here and make sure people can get around when they need to. Those are all key areas that we're addressing and whilst addressing those we will hit our targets of zero carbon and zero waste because they go hand in hand and it's quite critical. Those are the aims that have driven this whole scheme. An extraordinary project launched by ordinary Fintry folk. Their vision should ensure a strong and vibrant future for their village and a more sustainable and affordable environment for these children and the generations which follow.